Hello everybody, welcome to The Daily Sip. My name is Oliver from NEO and my mission is to bring you closer to organic Japanese green tea. And today I have a tasting session in front of me. Today I'll do it a little bit different because I received two new teas and I want to taste them here. And I want to give them a try and see if they can make it or not make it into our assortment. I'm really curious to see this ones here. They are, oh, these are two teas coming from the south of Japan, from Kagoshima. And on the one hand, we have an organic Kabusencha. This is one tea which I'm going to try. And on the other hand, I have a Fukamushi, so a deep steamed tea. And this one is from a Samidori cultivar, so quite a sweet cultivar, which I already know. And this Kabusecha is uh, satsuma called satsuma so um, i'm gonna draw a dive into these two tea and just explore a little bit in this sip session um what's about what about the teas i like and what i don't like so much and if they might make it or not in just this first and initial sip so it's going to be a little bit different it's not a tea i know a tea which we have at the moment uh, these are two absolute new teas which I just received from Japan. Good, now let's just dive directly into it. So typical here already Kabusecha, quite a grassy and a little bit of a freshness with it coming from its lighter steam, steaming after the harvest. And then I will have the Fukamushi, Fukamushi, clearly more sweet, a little bit of a kind of a, of a nutty flavor, a little bit more of an essential oil, nearly a little bit of a buttery flavor. Good. And I'm gonna try these two teas in the same quantity. And already now I can see a big difference between these two teas so this is a beautiful example so same farmer here we have the fukamushi you see kind of more the smaller a little bit more brittle leaves typical from the fukamushi style so this is actually when the tea um, is steamed longer that the leaves break a little bit faster because the cell structure gets a little bit weaker and here we got a typical Kabusesencha, longer needles, so I can show you here, for example, beautiful example of a longer needle. So when we just compare these to quite a big difference in aesthetic from the outside. Japanese tend to like like these long, beautiful needles more. Meanwhile, the Fukamushi was for a longer time not really liked, but becomes more and more into vogue because it just has a beautiful subtle sweetness to it good so then let's dive into the sipping of these two here good then Fukamushi on this side and we're gonna take the Kabusecha on this side good so Kagoshima as we know a very nice region uh, for especially also uh, cultivars, so tea, temple, tea plant type varieties. While Shizuoka is a little bit more uh, the region where mainly um, Yabukita is made, but on the Yabukita side you have beautiful, beautiful um, differences also between the farmers or from farmer to farmer. So uh, the Fukamushi, we can just leave it in for around 45 seconds. So this one here needs a little bit less of um, steeping, while this one here, I would say we just leave it in for a minute, maybe a little bit longer. Both of them, I brew it at 60 degrees. And now I'm really curious to dive into these two teas and see how the taste difference is like. I expect this one here to be a little bit sweeter, maybe a little bit more fruity, and this one here, is definitely going more into the grassy it might be that there's some kind of a little um more of a little bit of a harsher maybe a little bit more um a tarty uh, tart flavor and this uh, is 
the difference I expect just from um, having a first sniff of the tea leaves. Good. And let's see. Okay, difference already in the brewing, the first brewing, you can see there's a clear difference between these two tea. Good. So, already in terms of color, you see the Fukamushi a little bit more, kind of a darker green, more intense green, while the Kabusecha is a little bit more kind of golden, a little bit weaker in the brewing. So now I'm curious to see how the flavor is different between these two. Let's start with the Fukamushi. Mm. Wow. Okay. That's a quite nice. Wow. Yeah, that's a good typical Samidori um, cultivar uh, brewing. Mm, the kind of <laughs> I was quite surprised now by the end note as well. So here we got more typical sweetness. So the Samidori is really known for its strong umami flavor and a, a sweet flavor which comes uh, with the tea more fruitiness. Um, but it's quite strong on the, on the umami flavor profile. So very interesting. But what is interesting as well, and that's why I stopped <laughs> for a second in the in the end, is there's kind of some kind of a cereal notes coming with it. So in the end, there's kind of a cereal, uh, nearly kind of sunflower seed notes coming in. That's quite interesting. Mm. It's very strong in the umami flavors and the savory taste note. But there's somehow on the uh, kind of cereally hay, rye and sunflower seed flavor profile just in the end. It's very slight, but it's very surprising. Good. Okay. So this one here, let's see. Yeah, clearly sweet corn is very dominant in the odor. I have a lot of essential oils, a little bit of a battery flavor. And it manifests really in a, in a very strong umami flavor profile with a slight cereal tone in the end. Maybe here I start just with the leaves first. Let's see, Cabo's Essentia. Mm, very grassy. It's a little bit of a spinachy, nearly earthy, earthy tone as well. That is clearly an earthy tone actually. And there's a slight, slight, slight scent of, 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 yeah, it's nearly a little bit going in the direction of, of seaweed, but very slight and fresh, like, mm. it's pretty nice. Okay, now I'm curious to see how this tea tastes like. Mm. Wow. Very different. So it's much lighter in umami taste. Mm -hmm. It's much more of a cucumber, a fresh taste, but not being astringent, not at all. So you don't have the citrusy, but it's kind of a light cucumbery. Mm -hmm. It's very sweet, actually. So there's a nice, smooth sweetness. I would nearly say it's like a little bit of, of honey melon. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that's surprising. Honey melon, light sweetness. I'm expecting sometimes from a Cabo's Essential a little bit more of a harsher flavor, but this one here, I'm really positively surprised. It's very light, very smooth, 
honey melon, a little bit nearly watermelon flavor profile. It's nice on the slight green, a little bit spinachy side, but not too strong and the umami flavor is really smooth swinging with this. So the savory taste note is not at all developed with this one here. So here definitely for the ones who want to have the savory kick, like the strong kick of kind of a savory flavor profile from um, a Japanese green tea, here you will be very well served. And here it's a very interesting tea. I must say it's very subtle very smooth sweet um, but f fresh but not citrusy it's like a honey me honey melon a little bit of watermelon is swinging with it a light spinach flavor so it's a very delicate tea very smooth and very fine tea mm. or then this one here bam kicks really in with this umami flavor It's definitely a very strong sensor. So let's go to number two. Always to have, always the second one. Some people like the second one better. Some people like the first one better. both at the same time good so you can see how the water is much slower going into the fukamushi because just of the smaller leaves they hold back the water just a little bit more kind of cock the holes of the the kyusu and here Now you see the difference, but so clear. And this is so beautiful about the Fukamushi again. And you see this color versus this color. It's just amazing. Still, this color is very beautiful, like kind of a, a golden, slightly greenish color. While this one here has this strong green color of a typical Fukamushi. Now let's go. And I guess, no, I will start with the Kabuse this time first. Mm. Mm. so it's kind of it's a very very delicate fine tea i guess i really have to taste this just alone without the fukamushi because fukamushi is bringing a lot of this savory flavor profile and it seems that it lingers a little bit in my palate well, this one here seems very fine, very smooth, and I'm not sure if it's too fine on the, it's even on the weak side. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, it's definitely a very fine, very delicate, nice cucumbery, fresh note, but without going too much in the citrusy, without going too much kind of into this um into an astringent or any astringent uh, flavor profile so it keeps it on the very smooth side but i will definitely try this tea alone and now number two of the fukamushi mm. Mm. so mm. It's okay good so this one changes quite a lot also so first you had this um you had really this strong savory flavor profile and now it goes over a more a little bit into a more green flavor profile so you have much more spinach you have much more fresh cut grass in the taste note there's a slight citrusy note now swinging with it so you have a light light kind of Slight astringency with it. There's always this slight toasted, slightly roasted flavor, cereally flavor, so it's moving a little bit more in a toasted flavor. 
it's very subtle it's very it's quite interesting so this tea is super interesting in terms of savoriness very strong in the beginning slight cereal notes then the second note gets a little bit more into the green note there's a slight citrusy note so a slight astringency coming up now and the kind of cereal note changes more into a toasty note but it's very subtle in the in the background so this is definitely quite an interesting fukamushi i will have to compare it to the henta samidori this is definitely uh something i will do because there we also have a samidori uh fukamushi style tea so it's a similar tea to this one here so i'm curious to see what the difference between these two is This one is just a sweet, mellow, very, very nice. It's even, I would even say, it's not that flavorful. Uh, and it might be a very, very beautiful tea for the afternoon. So I'll definitely have to check this one again. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. It has a very nice grassy kind of summer breeze note. A little bit of a spinachy note, a slight, slight savory note, but very, very subtle. So definitely a tea which can go also for people who are don't, not too much fancy or not too fancy about this strong, intense savory note. So this one is very subtle, staying more on the green, on the on the nice kind of a, a more a more grassy side, but it is not drifting off into uh, kind of uh, the stringent or the citrusy side so it's very it stays a lot in this kind of subtle sweetness a little bit of this honey melon watermelon um, flavor profile refreshing but without being astringent so quite quite interesting good so i definitely have to say two very good teas i received here so this one here is intriguing me a lot because it's very different from what we have until now I have to see if it's not too weak so i'll definitely taste it a second time and this one here is super interesting well strong savoriness and then drifting off in the cereally or even toasty flavor so i'll definitely compare this one to to the henta samidori so this was this a small tasting session from southern japanese green tea organic green teas from the region of kagoshima so i hope you like this one too and if you ever have a question do not hesitate to ask me i'll be happy to answer them and um, i guess i'll see you tomorrow thank you bye bye